might actually be a long one, so buckle up. Alright, so let's start. All the numbers are here all mixed up, so it's gonna look a little weird. Write an equation to show the relationship between x, the number of tickets, and y, the total talk total cost. So x, the number of tickets, so this is your x and your y. These are points on the graph, 2, 3, 4, 6, 6, 9, 8, 12, 10, 15. So you can easily, <coughs> well, not maybe not easily, but you want to find how did this, right, how did the 2 become a 3, how did the 4 become a 6, what is that, what are we multiplying that by, right? And if it's proportional, we're all multiplying by the same number. And that just happens to be your constant proportionality. So to find the constant proportionality, y over x, and it says, let's see, pick the point 2, 3, so if you pick the point, I'll write the points, 2, 3, the next one will be 4, 6, oops, a little prettier, so 2, 3, nope, nope, 2, yikes, let me choose this one, hmm, Better. So again, uh, we have to find the constant proportionality, right? It looks like it's proportional. We'll confirm. So you can pick any of the points: point two three, point four six, point six nine, eight and twelve, and ten fifteen. Doesn't matter which point. So let's pick a few of them. <clears throat> if you pick two and three, it'd be three over two. So the constant proportionality is three over two. If you pick four and six. Is six over four, which simplifies to three over two. So, if you pick nine over six, or the third point, nine over uh, nine, six nine, it'd be nine over six. Again, is three over two. Twelve and eight. Again, it becomes three over two divided by four, by three over two. And the last one, fifteen over ten. If you divide top or bottom by five, you get three over two. So it's a proportional table, and everything is being multiplied by three over two. So that's our constant proportionality. Now, if it's proportional, then our equation is simply y equals kx. In this case, y equals 3 over 2x. If you decide to write as uh, y equals 1.5x, that's fine too. All right, so now, um, because it's proportional, it goes through the origin. So do we really need to write plus 0? No, we don't. So, that, so either this one or this one. Same thing, why an equation to show a proportional relationship between x, the number of meals, and y, the bales of hay that they eat. So this is my x, and this is y. So again, find that constant proportionality. And this one is, I think it's easier. We don't, I mean, do you really need to do k equals y over x? Maybe you do. So we have points 2, 1, 4, 2, 6, 3, 8, 4, 10, 5. So if it doesn't matter which one you put, let's say this point right here, 10. 5, right? You would do 5 over 10 because it's y over x and you get a half. If you did 8 over 4, 8 and 4, the point 8 and 4, and you find cost proportionality, it'd be 4 over 8, which equals half. So anyone, any point that you choose, your cost proportionality is going to be, so it's all, all of them is times half, times 1 half, times 1 half, times 1 half, times 1 half. So your equation equals y equals k over uh, y equals kx y equals half times x, or y equals 0.5x. And again, no need to write the plus zero. Okay, so it's a proportional relationship because it will go through the origin. <clears throat> what is the scale factor used going from the length of a real alligator? So here's an alligator. Uh, I'll just make this the alligator, the real one, which is 175 inches long. And the toy, a plush, plush toy which is 7. Please ignore my drawing. So it's 175. I mean, this is definitely not the scale, but that's 175. 7 actually should have been a lot smaller than that. Maybe that. 7 inches. All right. <clears throat> so what's the scale factor going from? So you're going from big to small. It's a reduction. So the scale factor is a reduction. And then the reduction is small over big. And we're going to get the small value, which is 7, and the high value, which is 175. So that's my scale factor. So to go from 
the original, which is 175, to get to 7 inches, it was multiplied by 7 over 175. So in, also remember, if it's a reduction, our scale factor is going to be a number less than 1. Okay. 20, so we have uh, to the height of the real house, so we have a dollhouse, and the height is 2.8 feet, and the real house, okay, with which is uh, which that's modeled after 32.2 feet. What's the scale factor? What did we multiply that? That's basically what I'm asking, right? So it's an enlargement, so it's going to be a number greater than one. So the scale factor is going to be big over small, 39.2 over 2 over 8, 2.8. And that, I have no idea what that's going to be. I have a calculator. And just in case your multiple choice. It's not that number, 39.2 divided by 2.8, and the scale factor used. Nice, pretty number, 14. All right, so far so good. Maybe it won't be that long. Oliver reads, okay, so again, anytime they're asking you here, how many pages does it read in an hour? They're asking you for the unit rate, right? How much does he read in one hour? So how many? pages in one hour, this is what we want to get to. That's the missing information. So let's set up our proportion. 32 and 1 -fifth pages, which he reads in 1 and 3 eighths of an hour. Right, so we want to get to, from this, we want to get to this, the unit rate. And uh, well, literally, all we have to do, how do we get from this to here? We divide by 1 and 3 eighths. And we're going to do the same on top, divide by 1 and 3 eighths, and we get the unit. So let's go 32 and 1 fifth divided by, what is this, 1 and 3 eighths. And my calculator disappeared. Oh. Okay, steal a better calculator. 32 and 1 fifth divided by 1 and 3 eighths, 1 and 3 eighths, come on, come on, and we get 23 and 23, 23 and 23 over 55, so in one hour, that's how much he can eat. All right, second one, which one is being filled faster? Okay, so we have to get their unit rates and compare, so let's call this A. Let's call this B. So the A1 is two-thirds of a gallon in one-fourth of a minute. And the second one is three-fifths of a gallon in one-sixth of a minute, not a full minute. All right, so right now I don't know which one is filling out faster, but if you change both of them to unit rate. So let's find out in one minute. And let's find out how much water fills up in one minute. And once I have the one minute, I can easily tell you which one's faster. So one fourth of a minute. How do I get that to become uh, one minute? I can multiply that by four, right? I can multiply the top by four. If I multiply this by the bottom by four, the four cancels, right? cancels out, simplifies to one, and I get one minute, and then on top, two-thirds times four, it's eight over three, or two and two-thirds. So it's two and two-thirds gallons in one minute. The bottom one, we're going to multiply top and bottom by six. These two simplify to one, and on top, I get 18 over five, and that's three and three-fifths of a gallon per minute. So let me just write this one a little bit. It's two, what is that? Two and two thirds? Yeah. That is two and two thirds gallon in one minute, right? All right, eight over three is the same thing as uh, two and two thirds. So um, now look at this. Look at this. Which one fills up faster? This one, right? So much easier to. Determine. Uh, which one does not represent the proportional relationship? Okay, so does not.
Well, think about this. How does a 3 become a 3 times 1? How does a 6 become a 5? Is it times 1? No, it's not. So this is not a proportional relationship. How does a 3 become 1? Well, divide by 1 third. How does a 6 become 2? Divide by 1 third. Sorry, times 1 third. Um, how does a 9 become a 3? Times 1 third or divide by 3. How does a 12 become 4? Times 1 3. So this one is proportional. 3. How does a 3 become a 2? We're going to multiply that by 2 thirds. If I multiply 3 times 2 thirds, right? That simplifies and I get 2. So if I multiply 6 times 2 thirds, do I get 4? Let's see, yeah. 6 times 2 is 12 over 3, and that equals 4. So that checks, checks. So the constant proportionality in this, in uh, what do you call it, table B, everything is being multiplied by 2 thirds. Sorry, yeah, 2 thirds. Um, the next one's 2 thirds. So this is definitely proportional. So that's proportional. And this one, how did the 3 become a 4? I mean, uh, if you want, so again, remember what we did prior. Um, we find a constant proportionality, which is k y over x, right? So if you want to find out how did the x become a 4, right? What was that multiplier? The constant proportionality. We do y over x. So pick any of these points: point three and four, six, eight, nine, twelve. 12, 16, 15, and 20, and see if you get the same constant proportionality. So let's do 0.34. If you do 0.34, you get 4 thirds. Well, let's do 6 and 8. If you do 6 and 8, you get 8 over 6, which is also 4 thirds. If you take the third part, uh, point, you get 12 and 9. Sorry, 9 and 12, which becomes 12 and 9. And again, you get 4 over 3. So um, 15 and 20, right? So this is your, remember, this is your x and y. So you're doing y over x, so you put 20 over 15. Simplify, do you get 4 thirds here? If you divide the top by 5, you get 4. If you divide the bottom by 5, you get 3. So every single point in here, x value, is multiplied by 4 over 3 to get to the y. So this is proportional. This is proportional. And I think it was obviously the obvious one, right? Not proportional. Uh, Sally scores uh, 48 points in 60 games, let's assuming this is a proportional relationship. So again, k equals y over x. All right, so who is your dependent and independent? So we can say the number of points depends on the games, which makes this your y and this your x, just in case. So now, if you have the 48 points in 60 games, we're actually going to write the point on the graph would be 16 representing the number of games and 48 representing the number of points. So that's your point. Assuming this is proportional, right? Uh, if you do k equals y over x, you're going to get, let me write x and y, you're going to get 48 over 16, and k is going to be 3. So if it's proportional, our equation is simple, equals y equals 3 over x plus 0, which I'm going to erase because we don't need it. So there is, you know, that's your equation for that one. <clears throat> 20. Carlos runs 20 miles in two hours on the graph. What would be the coordinate point for the unit rate? Well, this is definitely not the unit rate. So 20 miles in two hours is just a rate. Now, to change that to the unit rate, we need to find out how much it runs in an hour. Well, divide by 2, divide by 2, and we get 10 miles in an hour. So again, uh, in here, you would def you'd definitely need to know who's your x and y. So this is your y your x, right? Because if you think about that statement, the number of miles depends, the number of miles that he's going to run depends on how many hours he's running. So this is your y and this is your x. So our point, <clears throat> so 10, 1, so if this is your y and your x, our coordinate point is actually the coordinate point 1, 10. So the unit rate is that value x equals 1, and then your y equals whatever, in this case, 10. <laughs> Tim bought 12 nodes for 840, each node costs the same amount. Writing equation shows the proportional relationship between the total cost and the total number done. So total cost is your y, number done is your x, right? So again, okay, y over x, and now our point here is would be 12, so 12 donuts, 
ball for 40 cents would be a point in our graph, right? So if you think about this, we can write number of donuts. This is our total money spent. So we have a point here which is twelve dollars. I'm not making this eight dollars and forty cents. So we have a point here where twelve dollars I pay eight dollars and forty. So they're asking if obviously eleven dollars I paid a certain value. Sorry, not eleven, ten. Eleven donuts, ten dollars I paid this, and so forth and so forth. Right? So it's a proportional relationship because at zero donuts I paid zero dollars. That makes sense. One dollar pay a certain amount and, and etc. So what are they asking for? <clears throat> they're asking us for the equation of the line. So the equation of the line, well, let's find the, let's find what do you call the constant proportionality, right? That is 12 times what is 840. So 8.4 divided by 12, and that would be, can it be? <clears throat> 70 cents. So we're going to write 0 0.7. Uh, K equals 0 0.7, or actually if you left this as uh, 7 over 10, uh, whichever one you found. So our final answer for the equation is Y equals 0 0.7X. So every donut, $1.70, $2.40, cents is $2.10, and so forth and so forth. Okay, so this is the equation we're looking for. This Second number 11, find the unit rate, constant proportionality, and the equation. The unit rate, if, well, that's 4, that's 2, right? And this would be 1, so the unit rate's about here. But I don't have the value. What I do know is that I have the points 420, I have the point 840, I have the point 1260, and so forth, right? This is your x and your y. So what is that multiplier? What are we multiplying? 4 times and 8 times and 12 times. It's all times 5 times 5 times 5. And that's your k, right? So k equals 5. So our equation here is y equals 5x. So they want the equation. Yeah, so that's our equation. The constant of proportionality is 5. I found that. And what's the unit rate? Well, let me write that as a ratio. So I can write as a rate, I'm sorry. Cups, number of cups. Right? So if I have 20 cups, I need I hear this point, if I have 20 cups, I need 4 pounds of sugar. Right, that's the rate. Let me change that to unit rate. So if I have 1 pound of sugar, how many cups do I need? Well, divide by 4, divide by 4. And we already knew the answer because it should be 5. So I need 5 cups. So this is your unit rate. Don't forget to label, please. Don't write 5 over 1. Then we don't know what you're talking about. <clears throat> Repetition, 12 is a repetition of 11. Um, the unit rate, I can't locate it, but again, we have all these points, 210, uh, 420, 630. All right, again, is it the same constant proportionality as the previous one? Yes, it is. It's always times 5, times 5, times 5, times 5. If you want to do k equals y over x, Pick any of those points, any of these points, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, do y over x. So let's pick 630. Here's my y, here's my x. We'll do 30 over 6, and k equals 5. So the equation of my line equals y equals 5x. The constant proportionality is 5. What's the unit rate? Well, what are we talking about? Miles and minutes. So let's pick a point here. The unit rate, I'll just go right ahead, is 5, right? Here's my 5. It's my unit rate, 5, let's just write the values, 5 miles in a minute. Okay. On a map, two cities are 5 and 3 fourths inches apart, or 5.75. The scale says, well, half an inch equals 3 miles. Alright, so I'm worried. we want to find the actual distance. So on the map, the distance between the two cities is 5 and 3 fourths inches. And again, if you write the units, it's so much easier to figure out who's here. So this is my x. Now, um, personally, I would write half. I change the half to 0 0.5, and I just write you know, cross multiply 0 0.5 x. And same thing, three times, instead of putting 5 and 3 fourths in the calculator, just write 3 times 5.75. That's going to get us 17.25. Remember, we're cross multiplying, right? 
Then we're going to isolate our variable here and divide 0 0.5 on both sides. And x is 34.5. So in real life, the two cities are 34.5 miles apart. <coughs> the distance between two villages is 595 kilometers. The length between the two villages on the map is 8.5 centimeters. What is the scale of the map? All right, so we have a map. So it says, so right now we know that 8.5, 8.5 centimeters on a map is worth 595 kilometers. All right, so we can go and say, hey, what's one centimeter on the map equal to? Because that's the scale that you will see, right? So how does this happen? Divide by 8.5. Divide this by 8.5. So 595 divided by 8.5 equals 70. So one centimeter on the map is actually equal to 70 kilometers in, in real life. Floor plan of a house is drawn using a scale 3 fourths of an inch equals 5 feet. So again, 3 fourths of an inch, 5 feet. So the scale of the map. <coughs> On the blueprint, the master bedroom has dimensions of four, four inches by five and a half inches. What is the actual area of the master bedroom? So we've done a couple of this on our previous check and understand this. So you have a blueprint, right? The architect architect came and gave you a blueprint, and your room looks like this, right? But in real life, what is those what are those two those two dimension equal to? So let's do four inches first. Let's see what four inches is in real life. So there's your proportion. Cross multiply and again 3 fourths, right? 0 0.75. And then if you multiply the other two, you get 20. Divide by 0 0.75, 0 0.75. <coughs> and we get 26 and 2 thirds. X equals 26 and 2 thirds. I'm going to leave it as a fraction. So in real life, right, this, the width here, is 26 and 2 thirds feet. And now I'm going to go back. I can add the luxury racing. And instead of 4 feet, I want to see what 5.5 feet is. So again, cross multiply, you get 0.75x equals 5 times 0. Ooh, 5 times 5.5, and you get 27.5. Divide by 0 0.75, divide by 0 0.75. x equals. 36 and two-thirds right feet so those are the actual dimension of your room and you're still not done because they actually want the area so the area you're gonna have to multiply these two figures so the area of the room uh, 26 and two-thirds times 36 and two-thirds um, enter the area of a room yikes is that your room can't be up Seventy-seven, nine hundred and seventy-seven uh, and seven ninth feet square. That is a huge room, huge, huge. Well, it says actual master bedroom, so the bedroom master bedroom usually has uh, the bathroom inside, the walk-in closet. Oh my God! <clears throat> oh, so it could be. Bigger than most one-bedroom apartments or two-bedroom apartments in New York City. <clears throat> so, Abigail rec <clears throat> redecorates her house. A scale drawing of her house shows the dimension of the house as nine centimeters. So again, here, same type of question. Nine centimeters times ten centimeters. The scale here, and I'll write it: three centimeters on her drawing equal to ten feet in real life. All right, so we want the actual dimensions of her room in actuality. So let's do the nine centimeters first. So, so if I had nine centimeters on the on the drawing, how many feet would that be in real life? Well, cross multiply, we get three x equals ninety. Divide both sides by three, this mm -hmm. one's easy. X equals thirty. 
So this is 30 feet. Now we can go back and do this. What's 10 feet equal? Oops, 10 centimeters. So 10 centimeters on your drawing, cross multiply again, 3x equals 100. So I'm gonna divide this by three. <coughs> And we get 33 and one third. So x equals 33 and one third feet. Jeez, feet are like huge. Um, and then we're gonna multiply that, and we want the area of the house. Oh, okay, thank God this is a house. It makes more sense. I'm gonna see if there's any. 33 and one third times 30, and we're gonna get the dimensions of the house: a thousand square feet. Squared. All right, now that's a house that's not that big. All right, similar triangles, right? Corresponding, so if they're similar shapes, the corresponding sides are the same. So let me just increase this down just by a little bit. Actually, I can increase it using technology. There you go. All right, so. <coughs> We want the height of the tree, right? So you gotta find the corresponding size first. So the this the guy corresponds with the height, and <laughs> this part here corresponds with this part. So you get two lines in the guy and two lines in the height. So those two are corresponding. So when we set a proportion, the ratio of corresponding sides are equal to each other. So corresponding size three and twenty-four, three of the I guess that's a shadow of the guy and 24 the shadow of the tree the height of the guy so corresponds to the height of the guy and the height of the tree cross multiply we got 3h and then we're going to multiply 24 times 5.5 let's give us 132 it's divisible by 3 so we're going to divide that by 3 the height is 44 so the height of the tree is 44 feet. All right, so far, not that bad. <clears throat> what must x be in order for the figures to be similar? So if the similar, if their shapes are similar, then corresponding sides are proportional. So let's figure out who is who, though, right? So 72 is going to match up with 18, right? And x matches up with you got to figure that out, All right? <clears throat> so, corresponding sides. So, oops, sorry. Let me write two lines here and two lines here. So those two match and the other two match. X corresponds to 12. And that ratio has to be equal to the other two sides. So 18 of the smaller triangle corresponds to 72. So we're missing this value here. Uh, many ways you can do this. Okay. Um, Probably a multiple choice question. So one way you can do it is figure out how do I go from 72 to 12 divided by 6. So therefore here I'm also going to divide by 6 and x equals 3. Another way you could have done that so is how do I get 72 to become 18? Well, divide by 6. Sorry. <clears throat> And then how do I get this to go here? Divide by 4 again, and x equals 3. Or, if you want to go for it, cross multiply 3 times 72, you get 72x. 12 times 18, you get 216. Divide by 72, divide by 72, and x equals 3. All the same. Here, again, corresponding. So again, this points that way, right? And this angle points that way, so there's two angles. So we know that the x and the 6 are corresponding. So let me, right, that's how one way of you finding out which corresponds is who. So obviously the 5, the two lines corresponds to the 0. So <clears throat> we want to find x. Um, and then th this side corresponds with that. But we don't actually need that. Um, let's write it. So x of the big triangle corresponds with 6 of the small triangle. Let's keep uh, 
big triangle on top. So, and then 11 of the big triangle corresponds with 5. Small triangle. All right. And I'm going to write another ratio. So, and this side, 19.8 of the big triangle corresponds to, I don't know, let's put a question mark here. Now, I want to find x. You can use x over 6 with 11 over 5. You can use x over 6 with 19.8 in question mark. Well, you wouldn't use these two ratios, would you? Because then you have two unknown variables. So obviously, we're going to use this. Oh, cross multiply 5x equals 66. So I divide both sides by 5. 66 divided by 5. And x equals 13.2. <clears throat> um, how much do I have left over? All right, so there's an action. It's not that bad. So your check for understanding is going to be a little bit different. This time. It's going to be a bunch of numbers, and I'm going to circle. Let me go back. I'm going to circle the numbers. <clears throat> it's going to be this one. The answer to 13. So you're going to have, I don't know, like a bunch of numbers. Let me make up 5, and then the next one, 7, 1 third, next one, 15. You're going to have a string of numbers, and that's going to be your bonus word. So it's going to be this one. So whenever I circle in order, so that's going to be the first one. Okay, so the answer to 13. <coughs> and then I'll tag along. <coughs> I got to write this down too. So 13, um, ten. I'll circle it so that you know. So anything I circle, right in that order. So far, we have those two questions. I'll pick three more. So it'll be five numbers. Okay. Where am I? Um, twelve. The rectangle is 12 meters long and 20 meters, 21. So I'm going to draw this 12 meters long and 21, so 21 wide and 12 meters long. All right, that's, that's what the rectangle looks like. Which dimensions correspond to a non-similar triangle? So which one is not a non-similar? So <laughs> let's draw four and seven. Let's draw four and seven first. So I'm assuming the length comes first and then the width. All of them so this is a four going this way and a seven going down so think about it for a second how did the 12 become a four divide by three how did the 21 become seven divided by three so this one is actually similar right so this is similar we want one that's not similar so this is similar so that's not the answer so let's draw another rectangle eight and fourteen <coughs> Okay, so how um, a second. yeah, how did this become that? So it would be uh, five divided by four, two thirds, right? So if you divide eight divided by twelve. Sorry, not two thirds. Um, yeah, two thirds. So times two thirds. So if you think about it, uh, twelve divided by twelve times two is twenty-four divided by three is eight. So that works. And then if I multiply this by two thirds, uh, twenty-one and three simplifies to seven, and seven times two is fourteen. So that's actually both sides, both lengths were multiplied by two thirds, which means eight and fourteen. Is similar. Let's try 20 and 35. So going 20 over here and 35 going that way. Sorry, 35 going this way. So it looks like it's 1 and 2 thirds. So if I multiply 12, so again, you multiply 12 times 1 and 2 thirds. You get 20. So 12 times 1 and 2 thirds, you get 20. So going this way, you multiply by 1 
and two thirds. So if I multiply 21 by one and two thirds as well and get 35, then 21 times one and two thirds, I get 35. So this is also similar. Okay. Um, so, and then the last one is 24. So let's put 24. 24 and 35. So 12 to 24, you can easily say it's times 2, and then 21 to 35, it's also, is it times 2? No, it's not. It's times 2? No. So this one is the one that's not similar. So again, that's one way of doing it. So the other way you could have done it is, here's 12, uh, this one is 21, there's the original, and let's take 4 and 7, for example, the one that was 4, and this one was 7. So you could have, again, set two ratios, right? So this corresponds to this, and this corresponds to this. So the ratio of corresponding sides are equal to each other, right? So 12 over 4, is that the same thing as 21 over 7? 12 over 4 is 3, and 21 over 7 is 3. So that's definitely similar. And you can repeat that same process as the other one. So it's whatever you want it to do. Which point represents the unit rate? Well, well the unit rate's right here, right? When x equals 1, y equals whatever, right, that's your unit rate. So that's what you're looking for. So you're looking for this point right here. 1, comma, whatever. Right, and that point is right here. So we know the unit rate is run, and what's the, what do you call the total cost here? This should be 12. The point that represents the unit rate is the point 1, comma, 12. Okay? Um, how far could the runner run in 10 minutes? Okay, so let's see, he can run one sixth of a mile in four fifths of a minute. So, do you want to find the unit rate? You can. You don't want to find the unit rate? Well, you know what? I'm going to do it by finding the unit rate. Um, so, let me find out how much he runs in one minute. You didn't have to find it here. You could have just gone straight. So our goal is to get here. All right, can you find something that multiplied by 4 fifths become 10? Yeah, you can. Can you use the unit rate? Yes, you can. It's whatever you choose. So I'm going to find the unit rate. So in order to change this to unit rate, I'm going to multiply this by 5 over 4, which means I multiply the top by 5. If I do that, I get 5 over 24. So in one minute, this fellow here can write 4. 5 24th of a mile. Now they're asking us, what can you do in 10 minutes? Look how easy that is. Times 10, and then times 10. So times 10, uh, 5 over 24 would be 50 over 24 without simplifying. And if you simplify, you're going to get 2 to 48, 2 and 2 50th, or 2 and 1 over 24. That's what you should get. And I'm just going to confirm that. Uh, 5, blah, 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 times 10. Yep. No, 24. Sorry. What did I do here? So it's 2, which is 48, and 2 over 24. Apologies. And then final answer, 2 and 1, 12. So in 10 minutes, you can run 10, uh, 2 and 1, 12 mile in 10 minutes. So let me circle this one because that's also that's going to be your third answer, right? Part of your part of your, uh, your uh, bonus right there. Third number of your bonus. I get back to that. Um. And what do we have here? The relationship between years and the height of a tree shown below. How tall is a tree in 24.5 years? So I'm a, we can find, we you will definitely find, and we need to find the constant proportionality, right? So how, how does this change happen? Okay, here we go, right? Find the constant proportionality. What are we multiplying? Right, so what's the constant proportionality? So you have one, two, three, four points. Pick any of the points, find K. So K equals, and then, 
Let's just use the first one because they're smallest number. So we're going to do one y, remember it's y over x, so k equals 1.9 over 2. I'm going to leave it like that. Now, uh, just to confirm, I'll do one more point. I'll do 8 and 7 points, 8 and 8, 8 and 7.6, so it would be 7.6 over 8. Um, let me see what 7.6 divided by 8 equals 0 0.95. 1.9 divided by 2 equals 0 0.95. So if you want to simplify this a little bit, you can go 0 0.95, 0 0.95. And if you want to do the other two, just to make sure that they all 0 0.95, go ahead. So what, I'll do that. 15.2 divided by 16 is also 0 0.95. So the constant proportionality is 0 0.95. So the equation is y equals 0 0.95. X. Or if you want to use 1 over 1.9 over 2, that's fine too. But here's our equation. Now, the question here is how tall is a tree after 24.5 years? So after 24.5 years, let me extend the table, how tall is that tree? Well, every single x value is being multiplied by 0 0.95. So take this and multiply it by 0 0.95, right? So y, which is the height of the tree, is 0 0.95 times x, and in this case, x is 24.5. And that should give us the height of the tree. So 0 0.95 times 24.5, the height of the tree, and it's going to be 23.275. And it doesn't say anything about rounding, so I'm just going to leave it like this. It's only three decimal places, and we're going to write feet. Okay? Feet. That doesn't say feet, that says like foot. Feet. Um, okay. Explain if the table shows a proportion relationship or not. Again, those of you who are used to seeing the table like this, so here's x and y. Maybe that's easier to see. I don't know. 4 and 48 is your first point, 7 and 84 is your second point, and you have 10 and well, if it's proportional, then this relationship, right, is the same from every x to every y. So 4 times what's 48 is times 6. Sorry, times 12. Oh my God. Times 12 is 7 times 12, 84? Yes, it is. Is 10 times 12, 120? Yes, it is. So here, if you do the constant proportionality, y over x, you got 48 over 4, which equals 12. If you do it the same here, you get 84 over 7, which equals 12. And if you do that again, 120 over 10, you also get 12. So the constant proportionality is the same for every point, right? So therefore, it's proportional. Okay. All right, so not too much left. Yay. Find the constant proportionality to determine if the, uh, if the relationship is proportional. Okay, so you have one, two, three, four, five. Number of trees and number of apples. The number of apples depends on the number of trees, or the number of trees depend on the number of apples? No, the number of apples depends on the number of trees. That makes sense. Okay, so the number, this will be my y, this will be my x. Okay, so you have four points. This is times 13, which is 26. This is times 13, which is 39. This is times 13, which is 78. This is times 13, which is 130. And the last one, 12 times 13 is 156. Not proportional. Right? Because the constant proportionality, it's not. So tricky, right? It looks like it is proportional. But it's almost all proportional except when we came to the 12 instead of 156, because 12 times 13 should be 156, and it's not that. So. <coughs> not proportional because this k, so k here is 13, k here is 13, <coughs> k here is 13, k here is 13, <coughs> 146 divided by 12, k here is 12.16, repeated, so not proportional, so careful with these types of questions. Uh, tallest tree in the United States, blah, 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 in California, it's 300, so here's a tree. It's 321 feet tall, that's the height. 
Okay, suppose you're five feet eight inches. So here is you. Oops. Floating about the air. So here's you, five feet eight inches. Okay, and a and cast a shadow that is two feet at a certain time. And your shadow, let me put your shadow this way, it's two feet. <laughs> okay. Um, about how long is a tree's shadow at the same time of the day? So we want to find the shadow of the tree. Now we have a problem here. Hopefully everybody noticed that this five feet eight inches it's not in uh, it's, it, you can't write five eight right so you can write five eight over twelve or five right because it's one foot is twelve inches so you can write five eight over twelve or five and divide by four is two or five and two thirds if you want that's acceptable so they're five feet eight inches you can write five and two thirds that's the that's that that's the tricky part in this question. Okay, or change everything to inches. Pretty sure this one is what we call uh, easier. So let's similar, right? So we have the height. So that height of the person corresponds to the height of the tree, and the shadow of the person corresponds with the shadow of the tree. And we can set, use that to set our proportion. So same our proportion, we get. 5 and 2 thirds, which is the height of the person, height of the person. He is, which corresponds, which is the height of the tree, which is 321, height of the tree. And that ratio, if they're similar, has to be equal to the ratio of the other two sides. So the shadow of the person, which is 2, so I'm going to write shadow person and which corresponds to the shadow of the tree which I don't know shadow of the tree and from here we just go cross multiply um, so we're gonna multiply 321 times 2 and divide that by 5 and 2 thirds okay so that's so if I continue that let me continue over here I'm gonna get 5 and 2 thirds X equals 642, right, 2 times 321, 642, divide both sides by 5 and 2 thirds, right, and x equals the height of the tree. So 642 divided by 5 and 2 thirds, enter, so the height of the tree is, sorry, the shell of the tree is 113, right, 113, 5, over 17. So that's going to be our fourth number. Okay. Um, I'll circle the question here so you know that this is the fourth question. Um, All right. Find the constant proportionality. Okay. So if I could find, if I find the value one here. If I could go here, right? This is one, and I could make a dot, and I could tell you what you call, and you could, and we could tell what that value was. Then right there would be a unit rate. And if I find that y value, right? So I have x. Y so well, x is one. If I knew what the y value was, I could tell you what the cost of proportionality was without doing any work. But I don't have that unfortunately. So how do I find the cost of proportionality? Pick any point on this line, right? Pick any point on this line. Doesn't matter which one. And um, because it's a proportional line, so let's pick twenty and six. So right, x and y. So the point 26, so if you want to use 5 and 1.5, that's fine. And then pick one point, go k equals y over x, it's k, y is 6, x is 20. Simplify, you get 3 over 10. So, 
is it asking us to find well it's asking us to find the constant proportionality so k equals 3 over 10 or 0. Point, oops or 0. 0.3 okay so it's up to you scroll down yeah so yeah that's it so that's going to be our fourth one so I'm going to circle that's going to be our fourth one all right so I'm running out of questions um, and I am going to use the doesn't matter the, the fractional value okay I'm going to use fractional value just to okay write that down all right so we have four numbers um oh this one again all right so uh i highly suggest you separate the triangles we have one little triangle over here we have that this is seven and this is 15. sorry that looks like an x this is seven that's 15. so the big triangle bigger triangle right this is 11 over here and this this side over here from A to C is X plus 15. Now <clears throat> they're similar, right? So this side corresponds with this side and this side corresponds with this side. Set your proportion. So seven corresponds to 11, that ratio. And then on the small triangle, the 15 corresponds with X plus 15. Now it's just a matter of seven X plus 105, just read properly, equals 11 times 15, which is 165. We're going to do minus 105, minus 105. That goes away. 7x equals, um, what is that? 0, 6, 60. <coughs> and then we're going to divide this by 7, divide this by 7 x equals, and this is going to be a fractional value, so let's go 8 and 4 over 7. So x equals 8 and 4 over 7. Did I do something wrong? Just hang on a second. Uh, that's 7. This is 15. That's okay. This is 11. That's x plus 15. That's okay. 7 corresponds to 11 as Sorry, right, seven corresponds to eleven. Good. As fifteen corresponds to x plus fifteen. Yeah, looks right. <coughs> Find x and y. Oof. All right. So we have a big triangle. We get the value. So this is twelve. This is nine. This is fifteen. And we have a smaller triangle. This is x, this is y, and this is z. So you can't, let me change the colors here. This corresponds to this, this corresponds to this, and this corresponds to this. So let's write the three ratio. So y corresponds to the 12, the 3 corresponds to 9, and the x corresponds to, oops, I forgot, and the x corresponds to 15. So we have the three ratios. Uh, obviously, we can't use the first one and the third one, so you got to do the first one and the second one to find y. And then x can be, you can use whichever ratio. So let's do these two here, right, to find y. Um, cross multiply, we get 9y equals 36. Divide by 9, divide by 9, y equals 1. So now I can come back to this ratio here, take the y out. Now, when you want to find x, you can use x over 15 with 3 over 9, or x over 15 with 4 over 12. But I'm pretty sure everybody is going to use 3 over 9. Now, you don't have to because, look, how does 12 become a 4? Divide by 3. How does the 9 become a 3? Divide by 3. So how, what would be x? Well, 15 divided by 3 would be 5. So x would be 5. But since we're doing proportions, let's cross multiply. 3 times 15 is 45. 9 times x is 9x, divide by 5, divide, sorry, divide by 9, divide by 9, x equals 5, which we already know. So, 
there's the two values that I need. Okay. Um, is that it? No, no, one more. Last question. Certain shade of blue contains the ratio of half a cup of blue. If you mix half a cup of blue with one third cup of red, you get that shade of purple. So right now, if you do one half plus one third, <clears throat> you get five over six. So that means that right now you have five or six total, right? You use five, six. So when you mix one half, half a cup of blue with one third cup of red, it means that you use five, six cups in total. All right, so that's, now <clears throat> on this side, let's write blue, cup blue, let's write cup red, and let's write total. So it says, to make this shade of purple, you use half a cup of blue. You mix that with half a cup of red. Good. Which means you use 5, 6 total. Now, if you use 24 cups of blue, 24, so you want to make a bigger batch. So you're using 24 cups of blue. And with that, you, wanna, you use 20 cups of red. The question is, did you use the right proportion? Meaning, from half to 24, you're going to multiply it by what? By 48. So you're increasing it by a factor of 48. Did you do the same thing? Did you increase this by a factor of 28 as well? If not, then we have an issue. And I'll tell you right away that here you multiplied by 60. So in this particular uh, what do you call it? in the batch that you made, right? You increase the blue by a factor of 48 and you increase the red by a factor of 60. So did you use the, what do you call, the, the, the proportion correctly? The ratio correctly? No, you didn't. You ended up using a lot more red than you needed. So did, with the shade of purple, you want it come out correctly? The answer is no. Would it be more red or blue? It definitely would be more Okay, and that question is uh, pretty simple. Okay, so I think I have five numbers. Um, that's your, uh, what do you call, bonus word. Um, yeah, that's it.